Okay, well, welcome back, or welcome to the next video for the FHL. Uh, what I wanted to go over with you guys here briefly tonight was the uh, just show you the new page that I created that's going to allow uh, anyone who wants to assist in rating players to um, make their thoughts known. I've developed a, a page that allow will allow you to rate players for their six offensive, six defensive, seven neutral scores. Uh, so you can assign a rating to them as to how you see fit. I've had people in the past come up to me and they say, hey, you know, like Pavel Dotsuk should have a better back check than he does, or this guy's speed's not right. And this is going to allow a mechanism for you guys to have your say as to how you think guys should be rated. The flip side of the coin there is I've had some concern from people saying, hey, it's going to, you know, imbalance the game. You know, if someone gives their guys, they're going to rate all their guys 10s. And the way it works is because it's based on the composite score. If they were to rate their guys all with 10s, let's say, in all the offensive categories, and the guy only has 30 offensive points, which is what the card generator sort of spits out and says this is what he has, then each rating would be a 5. Um, if guys go through this and rate them um, honestly and, and accurately, um, what it will do is it's going to make the players even that much more true to to form. So the engine uses all those different categories in all sorts of different situations. So it would be really nice to have a a, uh, um, a sort of group thing when we determine what the player scores are. So the way this is going to work is all everyone in the league is going to have access to do this for as many players or as little players as they want. Um, hopefully there's going to be some people that will get a kick out of using this and it will, anything that you're doing in here is actually going to greatly assist in the game moving forward in, in the realism of the game. So hopefully people are going to want to do that. So what's going to happen is as we go through this year, because we're sort of at the end of the year already, it'd be interesting to see how many people get out here and rate guys, but, but these ratings will actually go into, um, helping spread the points when we generate our cards, uh, this summer for for next year so without uh, any further ado I want to show you what what the deal is here so I am on the uh, the way you're going to get to the page is right now is going to the lineups page so logging on um, as your team close that out there All right, so what you see is I'm running this in the local copy here because this doesn't actually been published to the web yet. I want to make sure I get the video out there first before people start putting stuff out there. But on the lineups page, you'll see this extra sort of red area, the rate players area. So if you click on that, what it's going to do is uh, give you the ability to load two teams. Now, my thought on the two teams load is if I'm sitting down watching a game and I have my laptop with me, there's a lot of time to say, boy, I wish I would have something that I would be able just to plug in some values uh, that I could feed into the game at a later time to help flesh out uh, player cards. So what I've done is um, there's two team, uh, two team drop down boxes here. So my thought is you would be able to uh, pull uh, one team in, let's say the visiting team, and then another team in the home team. So if I was watching the game <clears throat> this past weekend, I know there's some games on tonight, I'm not exactly sure who's playing, but um, but if, like, if I was, had this on yesterday, I could have brought the uh, Flyers up, pulled them down, and I could have brought the Washington Capitals up. So what this does is it doesn't give you a an, sort of an active list of who's playing on a given night, uh, but it should be 99% correct because what it does is it takes every player who's played in like the last five games and, show, and displays them on here. So, um, so now that we have our two teams loaded, um, the one thing I want to show you over here real quick is just a, uh, a quick sort of bell curve uh, explanation of, of how the players should be rated. Uh, the way the bell curve works, you may remember from your statistics courses, either in college or in high school, is that the, the center part, the, there's 68.2% of the players or of, a, of an analysis would fall within these two points. So these points are our four, fives, and sixes as far as our ratings go. The ratings you're going to be giving these guys for the different skills are zero, which is the worst, and ten, which is the best. So if you can see on the speed one here, I just have a speed up here to give you a sense of, of um, how this might work. 
Now, obviously, this is catered directly to speed, so it doesn't, you know, your board work would be have different uh, descriptions, obviously, for each one of these. But to the right, the higher numbers are better. To the left, lower numbers are worse. So for speed, uh, the four, five, and six would sort of be considered average, with four being slightly below average and six being slightly uh, faster than average. Um, if we go to the right here, the better scores, if you take a look at 7s and 8s, that's 13.6%. Uh, so th these players would be considered fleet. Uh, and then you have your fast players, which would only be 2.1%, and then your blazing fast players, which is only 0.1%. So if we have 1,800 players, that means uh, at 0.1% that only 18 players over 1,800 would uh, be ranked as having a 10 speed. It's that fast. So you can see it's much more difficult to get a 10 speed um, than it is to get a 7 or 8 speed. I mean, you can see by the distribution of, of um, the way these sort of should be applied. So on the, on the left side, it's the slower part. So 2s and 3s would be plotting. 2s uh, obviously would be slower. Uh, lead foots would be 1. And then glacier esque would be zeros. Uh, so it would be, again, just maybe 18 players of the whole league. So if you're watching a game, this is the way I want you to sort of think about how you're going to be assigning scores. So most of the time, you know, you know, two-thirds of the time, someone's going to have a 4, 5, or 6 rating unless they really excel or really poor in an area. Okay, now you figure out, well, how do I actually do the rating? So if I'm watching the game, uh, I'll just pick Braden Coburn here at the first. So I'll click on Coburn. Uh, the other nice thing about this, I think, is is cool, is when if you have these up and you're watching a game, a lot of times I'll be watching a game and say, I wonder who owns that guy, because that guy's pretty pretty good. Uh, so I'd bring my, I'd have my laptop, and I'd go to the FHL team page, and I'd, or player cards, and I'd look the player card up and see who owns them. Here it's actually going to show you who, who owns all the players uh, that are in a particular game. The guys down below here are guys that are not currently uh, owned by an FHL Team. So since I clicked on Braden Cobra and you can see his name is populated up here, and now you have the ability to rate 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, all the skills if you want. You certainly don't have to. Um, let's see, and I know, you know being a Flyers fan that, that Coburn has above average speed. So, you know, I think to myself, does he have this kind of speed? No. Does he have dying speed? Not, 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 not there. You know, he probably has maybe, in my mind's eye, given this distribution, uh, a 7 speed, uh, which is pretty good for, for being as big as he is. So what I would do is I would go to the speed category here, click 7. Now when I hit save, that screen disappeared. But if I were to bring Braden Coburn back up, you'll see the 7 still sitting in there. So you have the ability, you know, if you're watching the game later on, and you say, um, you know, as far as his board work, yeah, he's just averaging board work. Uh, grit. Uh, let's say he's just slightly above average in 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 grit. Uh, then you can hit the save button again. And when you bring him back up by clicking on him, that information is still retained. So you can jump from player to player. You know, when you click on a player, you see the name change up here, and rate the player um, as thoroughly or as uh, superficially as as you want. Um, now these ratings are going to be available to you. These ratings are unique to you as an owner logging in. So uh, for Braden Coburn, there's maybe someone else who has him rated slightly different than what I have rated. Now, all those numbers will sort of get in there and roll in when we do the final rating for the card. <clears throat> now the other thing I want to show you is the uh, slight difference for the goaltender. So I'm going to click on Steve Mason. And you can see if you click on a goaltender, it actually brings the uh, distribution up for the goaltending categories, which are different, obviously, than the skaters. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please post them on the board, and um, it would be a good place for discussion there. I'm also going to put some summary information on the main website as well, letting you know how many people are, you know, how many players have been rated this way. <clears throat> how many different uh, owners are rating. So hopefully you'll, you'll find this a neat tool and uh, a real interesting way to make our game even better than it is. I'm going to be using this myself, and I hope I, you know, I ask anyone who wants to to lend a hand in, in doing the rating. So again, any questions, post them on the board, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.